Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. It's the 17th of March, Friday. I believe it's St. Patrick's Day. So if you celebrate that, have a good one. I will probably put up some um, photographs of the green ray later, just after breakfast here. But uh, this is today's message. And I've titled it, Is This the Twilight Zone? And the reason I've titled it, Is This the, T the Twilight Zone? Is how do we know what is real? What is fake? What can we trust? What can we actually touch? What is grounded? What actually has living energy within it? Now you're watching me and this is actually me. This is a picture of exactly how I look at about nine o'clock on Friday morning. Having had a bit of sleep, spruced myself up, put my face on, but the energy that's coming through this screen is me, 100% me. What are you going on about, Amanda? Of course it's you. We're entering a twilight world soon, whether we like it or not, and it's happening much, much faster than I personally am comfortable with, and I suspect most of you are comfortable with. And it is linked into the arrival in our world, which has been here for a while, of AI, and in particular, what I want to talk about today, CGI. Computer graphic imagery, I think it stands for, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the gist of it and why I'm talking about it today is that I have spent probably my whole spiritual career, <laughs> and I say career because obviously I'm a spiritual being that's always been on my spiritual path, but I haven't always been serving the public, I suppose. So that's why I say a career um, for well over, well, coming on 20 years now, actually. It'll be 20 years in 2025. And for me, it's always been about honouring energy. And one of the vehicles, the main vehicle that I chose to have as my foundation is colour. Colour as an energy system. You may have other energy systems that you tap into, that you rely on, that might be linked into the crystal kingdom, which is an energy system in its own right. It might be sound, it might be music, it could be many different things. It could be herbs, it could be plants. But for me, colour's always been the thing that switched me on. And... I obviously created my own colour system, which is called Metatron Colour Healing. All of the bottles that you see me use from time to time on most of my videos. And they aren't just pretty little bottles. They do things. But ultimately, they are an energy system that holds within it very important and high vibrations of whatever it is they're trying to help you with. Connecting to Metatron, Merlin processing your grief, um, helping you to be happier, uh, connect to your higher self, uh, open your third eye, whatever it is. They're keys. They're keys that you can use and they have energies within them. Uh, yesterday, because we're photographing um, all of the bottles again, because as you know, they're changing and a lot of them now don't have the pictures. They have the etched words so you can actually see the colour more. That was the whole point of doing it. Um, we're having them re-photographed and it's going quite well and uh, they've been done uh, but we were struggling with a few of them just because of the, the colours weren't photographing particularly well and it's a bit of an art isn't it? And so somebody suggested why don't you employ the surface of somebody who basically can CGI them for all, for, for, for want of a better word? I think the idea is that they take the outline of, for example, the bottle 
and then they colour it in with the colour that it's supposed to be. So you get a better image to sell. The thing is, what you've actually done is you've taken out the whole life force of what it is that you're photographing, because you're not actually photographing something that's real. You're photographing something that's been computer generated. You want turquoise? I'll give you turquoise. You want yellow? I'll give you yellow. Now, you might well be able to reproduce that, but you can't reproduce the energy that is within that yellow or that is within that turquoise or that was in, or is within anything else. Put it another way. Imagine that you are going to photograph a crystal and you want to buy a crystal. Many of us purchase crystals online and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I purchase a lot of my crystals online just because it's convenient. I have trusted sellers, etc. And I go off the picture. I go off the energy that's coming from that picture. And I buy it. It arrives. It's brilliant. It's exactly what I was feeling. Imagine if you're purchasing a crystal or a colour spray, but it's not actually what you're going to get. It's a computer generated image of what that spray is or what that crystal is. We're entering a twilight world whereby what we potentially are going to be looking at isn't actually the real thing. Now, I hope the day doesn't arrive, but I know other people are already flashing up red warning signs about the fact that in the future, uh, scammers, for example, could be putting out uh, short videos which look like me, for example, or whoever else you're listening to. They have my voice. They have my face. They can make it move a bit like Pinocchio's puppet, you know, but it's not actually the person you think it is. This is scary, guys, isn't it? This is really scary territory. And I think why I'm talking about it today is that how they win, and I'm not talking scammers here, I'm talking generally this whole movement towards a false world where you don't actually know what that is that you're looking at, whether it is actually the thing or not, is that we have to stand up against it. I'll give you one more example before I talk about how we stand up against it. Uh, I don't know if any of you have got Samsung phones. So I used to have a Samsung phone, actually. They're pretty good. I'm, I've got iPhone these days, but uh, Samsung are not a bad phone either. But they've been in the news the last few days because, again, I'm a bit rusty in terms of all of the details. But I think what it is, is that people, for example, if it's a full moon, they've been rushing out to take a photograph of the full moon with their Samsung phone, like many of us do. And the photographs look quite good. It's like, wow, I've got a really good view of the, view, the moon there. Let's share that on social media or just keep it to myself. And it's come out that they've done something. There's some sort of app or some technology within the phone, which is actually not just enhancing what it looks like, but almost putting some sort of filter or over the moon itself. So the image you've got isn't actually what is out there in the sky right now that you've managed to capture. It's actually been filtered and falsified to a degree. And there's a big outcry about it. We just want to photograph the moon as it is. We don't want you, a middle party coming in saying what we think the moon should look like on any particular day. And we can throw our hands up in horror and think this is terrible. This is the twilight zone. But we also have to ask, how did we get here? And, you know, the whole thing about it's, it's a really difficult one because it comes to mind things like filters, which, you know, are fun. This isn't filtered, by the way, this particular film that you're watching of me. But I look relatively fresh faced because I'm actually in front of the window. <laughs> it's quite good light, but it's natural light. It's not. It's not in any way false. It's just the daylight. That's the only filter you need. Daylight or sunlight or moonlight. But yet we like our filters, don't we, as a species these days, particularly the youngsters, you know. Uh, but it's not real. You know, what's real is these lines etched into my forehead, which I've earned, actually. You know, the lines under my eyes I've earned. Why do we want to just sort of whitewash everything away? It's our character. 
But anyway, getting back to this whole thing about CGI and how do we win? I think we win by just stop being so lazy. Okay, that sounds a bit brutal, but it is nine o'clock in the morning. I've only had one coffee. Now I'm being serious. And, I, and this is also for myself as well. Because that's how they win. That, that This is how all this AI um, created content is winning at the moment, which is they're saying, we're going to make it easy for you. Don't worry about the lighting and, you know, all of that and how difficult it is to photograph it. We'll do it for you. We'll just colour the pictures in and then they're going to look like your bottles. But they're not, of course, your bottles. They don't have the energy. Um, and don't even get me started on AI created content in terms of writing posts, you know, that you switch on Instagram, you switch on Facebook, whatever, and you're reading something from your favourite YouTuber or whoever it is, they haven't written it necessarily. The computer has written it. The computer has decided what it is that you'd like to hear today. And it's not my, uh, for example, you know, if you've followed me a long time, you know, I often mix up my words, get my words wrong. I actually think it's quite quaint. It's part of my character. I'm never going to change. It's just part of who I am. It's called being a flawed human being. And that's what makes us human. That's what actually makes us interesting. Whitewash it all away and just let's let's just listen to computer generated content all day. No, thank you. And I think we're just needing to realise where we're being tempted by the can the carrot that's being dangled in front of our face. We'll make it easy for you. You haven't got any time to do this, so we will do it for you. Before you know it, you're in the twilight zone and you've lost, you've lost the authenticity. You've lost the raw creativity and you've lost what actually makes you, you or what you have created you, whether that's a aura spray, a piece of art, a piece of music, a book. It's so important that we stand up against this. Now, well, the only way we can do that is by staying true and authentic and raw and unfiltered and flawed. I truly, truly believe that. But I'm actually being shown a time by Metatron where, you know, the cat's out of the bag now. And let's face it, some people are inherently lazy and they want the machine to do it for them. So we're going to have a world that's very divided in terms of people that are producing content that over time is going to become very flat, is the word I'm hearing, very flat and monotone is another word I'm hearing. Metatron's saying it's a matrix within a matrix. <laughs> oh my God. We're trying to break out of the first matrix. We don't get another one on top of it. People really need to open their eyes to this stuff and see what actually is being offered because we're being offered something that is not what it seems and you have to stay true to who you are. You know, and again, going back to worst case possible scenario that somehow they suddenly bring out, you know, films of somebody like myself coming out saying, hey, I'm Amanda and I would like to offer you a reading. Please inbox me £500 and I will do it for you tomorrow. What are your questions? I have already said 100 times and I will say 100 times more. I don't do readings. So if you're watching something like that ever in the future and that person's saying that, it's not going to be me, is it? So discernment. And how do we get here? Maybe it is through a lack of discernment sometimes. You know, the film might be saying what you want it to hit, what you want to hear. It's the twilight zone. Very, very interesting, but tricky to navigate. Please stay true to who you are. Stay true to your soul essence. And your soul essence isn't scripted with computer codes. It never was. And it never should be. Stay raw, stay real, stay aligned to your spirit, to your God, to your higher self and be you. Much love. Take care. That is today's message. Bye bye for now.